you've got to connect with the lot that you have been given to teach. So it's very essential that the student gets to know the teacher at least, leave alone love the teacher. That's only possible when you know them. Well, I would get rid of all these silly rules that come from time to time. You can't do this, you can't do that. If people have actually broken away from their roots. Never let the odds keep you from doing what you know in your heart you must do. Hello everybody, I'm your host Seema Choria and I welcome you all to another insightful session on Great Principles. Joining me in conversation is my very ardent educator of the day, Mr. Sachida Singh. He is Principal of Jagran Public School, Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh. Welcome to Great Principles, sir. We are very honored to have you with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Seema Ji. It's uh, my pleasure too. So, sir, let me unveil your journey. Let us, my viewers would love to know more about you. So, sir, how did you enter into education domain? What is your vision for your student and what's keep you going in here? Yeah. The journey begins in 1986. I... Uh, passed out of St. Francis College, Lucknow, which is supposed to be one of the oldest schools here. And then after four years, I went back to the school and they asked me to start teaching English because I had just completed my master's with English. And it so happened that uh, I said yes to the principal and those very teachers who were teaching me four years ago became my colleagues and friends. And I got to see them in a different way. All that actually motivated me. I realized how committed all these people were. So I got into the teaching line uh, and it was a very good grooming ground as far as I'm concerned because uh, despite my background as a sportsman, I had developed interest in uh, the literatures of at least three languages and that, you know, that uh, uh, helped me to introduce a lot of new things uh, while I was teaching them English at the high school and intermediate level. So that's how the journey began. And uh, gradually, you know, I moved up and then I came to the, uh, the Colvin Talukdar's College in Lucknow, where I was for 10 years. That was a public school. Uh, and uh, I became a housemaster and then I moved on to the Birla group. There I became a principal, and ever since, uh, after the Bidlas, I was with Sri Ram Sarup School in Lucknow, and then now at the Jagran Public School. That's been my journey. As far as the vision is concerned, uh, there were a lot of things I noticed as a student, and I felt that these things could be done in a slightly different and in a slightly better way. So when I became a teacher, my priority was to make sure that those challenges are addressed. There were a lot of students who felt that they were, you know, they were missing out on things. And because of, you know, little blind spots that teachers do have, uh, a lot of things were uh, brewing in the minds of those kids. And when I became a teacher, I made sure that these things were addressed. And the students actually approached me in a different way. It was a very heartful way. And I'm so glad that I'm a teacher. Absolutely. So your journey is truly inspirational. You have seen education evolving, being there in so many years. So tell me one thing, sir. What is the biggest change that you see in the students of yesterday and student of today? Well, there is a world of a difference. These kids were born in the digital age. Most of them were born in the, you know, after 2001. And uh, these kids, for them, uh, going digital is so easy. And as soon as you take something to the blackboard or you take it to a laboratory, it becomes boring for them. I believe that we've got to adjust the entire educational system to the kind of generation that we have at our disposal. We call them the alpha generation and they understand the visual language, they understand the digital language. 
they they are not able to focus uh, for long durations we were made to focus the our teachers made sure that we were paying attention throughout those 40 or 45 minutes that we were in class and a lot of things have changed i believe a lot of technology has entered some people are resorting to technology just to flash uh, you know things in the market there are others who are using it a little more reasonably and i believe we want to take a mix of technology and the old school teaching and make sure that the kids get what they are going to find useful in the future and not just the curriculum the curriculum is just one aspect of education so talking about the alpha generation the zen z which we also call them sir as you were talking that you know that we were made to sit 40 45 minutes and we were made to focus attention is the thing which everyone is seeking today and i think the attention span has lowered to a greater extent of not only students even for us grown ups adults and each one of us today we have so much information that we want to consume in a very less time so what would you advise our teachers so that they can ensure that the students attention is glued to what she is talking about exactly the teachers you know they've got to focus more on the world in which these kids are growing up instead of just talking about physics chemistry biology and abstract mathematics you've got to relate it with the world in which they live for example uh, mentioning their statuses on social media and all that in, a, in inside the classroom which uh, old 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 teachers avoid doing uh, is not a very good idea i think it is a very important part of their world and we should address it directly so we've got to involve them and their ideas and their world of technology and the various social interactions that happen on social media we've got to make that you know uh, a part of our discussions in the classrooms if we really want the attention of the students otherwise they're going to call you old hat and switch off after four and a half minutes very rightly said sir the generation needs generates in you know, this generation knows the meaning of connecting they connect virtually the world is connected for them and you rightly said that connect with them make them involved in your discussions and see that they are having your they, they give your their attention to you so wonderfully explained sir moving to my rapid fire round now this round will reveal some fun facts about you also so we need you to answer in one word or a sentence all right sir okay. right so my very first question to you is what do you do in your recreational time well i read and listen to music okay may i ask you the book that you would recommend to my viewers well uh, at the moment i am reading the non existent night by italo calvino he is a novelist and that's a great book i, I think everyone should read it right wonderful Are you a movie buff? Oh, a great one! All right. So, who is your favorite actor, actress, and the movie? Well, I would call Jack Nicholson my favorite actor, and my favorite movie would be uh, As Good as It Gets. Okay. Or maybe so even Contact, a... Contact, Contact, starring Jodie Foster. Right. All right, so sir, as sir, like Hollywood movies, you are not very fond of Bollywood. Well, I do enjoy watching Bollywood films, but I don't take them seriously. Okay, they are meant for uh, entertainment purpose only. Great. All yeah. right, moving ahead to my next question. If you were to invite three people at your place for having lunch with you, who would be those three people from your circle whom you would invite at foremost? yeah first of all i would like to invite an old friend who's renounced the world and become an ascetic he is known uh, he used to be known as arun kapoor so i would like him to be here because we uh, had some very great moments in the past that fun the another uh, the, the, the other person i would like to have uh, is dr p n muttu he was the head of the western history department at the university here 
unfortunately he is no more and i miss all those sessions that we used to have on indian and world history and the third person if i could have uh, over for lunch or dinner or whatever would be uh, i think salman bushti i love the writer more than anyone else and i would love you know to have him at my house and talk to him about the very books that he's written great so i'm sure you know that these kinds of opportunity we may keep getting and we all love to interact with the people those whom we idealize also so moving ahead to my next question one tip for our new age teachers see you've got to connect with the lot that you have been given to teach you just can't stand in a different world while whereas they are standing in a galaxy that's far away so many light years away from you and you can't expect to communicate with them you've got to find a wormhole and go to them okay sir moving ahead to my next question what is one thing about you which many people do not know well they don't know that uh, i have a serious interest in urdu poetry especially the ghazal okay so may i have a privilege of hearing one or two sentences from beautiful urdu poetry from you oh why not there's so many of them there's one from firaz gorakhpuri if you enjoy urdu poetry tum mukhatib bhi ho kareeb bhi ho tum ko dekhe ke tum se baat kare koi aaya na aayega lekin kya kare dar na intezar kare that's the rough beautiful you know urdu has such a mesmerizing charm in it that you just get lost in those worlds and you are into all together a different uh, area where you are not even supposed to be i mean it has some charm which plays on you beautiful sir very wonderful exactly. coming up to the last question of this round so tell me sir if you were to change one thing in our current education system what would you change well i would get rid of all these silly rules that come from time to time you can't do this you can't do that you can't do this you can't do that you know you, you cannot expect anybody to function naturally with so many rules there are rules that are made by the board there are rules that are made by the school management there are rules that are made by the government there are rules that are made by society that the skirts have to be you know longer than the uh, knees or over the knees you know all these things i think these things should be thrown out of schools and teachers should be allowed to function like real educators you know standing with them eating with them playing around with them walking in the corridors with them and teaching them all the time no it would be such beautiful like if you, when we talk about india's glorious past kids were sent to gurukul and they were left under the guidance of the guru there was no one who was interfering in how the things are happening and that is when the learning was happening and today we have lost that glory and i think you know the way you are explaining if all these things actually happens we might get our lost glory back so i even hope that sir finger crossed let's see yeah and you know one thing that uh, uh, the students perform very well in those subjects where they love their teachers and they don't do well in subjects where they don't love their teachers so it's very essential that the student gets to know the teacher at least leave alone love teacher that's only possible when you know them and you don't get Absolutely opportunities so. to know them yeah i completely agree with you my daughter always say that i you know hindi is tough but my teacher is very good so i enjoy studying that and marathi i don't get it at all mama and even teacher shouts a lot so i i can completely relate to that it's a real life example which i have with me right now so yes teachers can make you fall in love with any subject so in for that right. you know they have to be very creative so moving ahead to the last section of the show which is called the expert talk question so sir you know the pandemic has played its role and uh, there has been a lot of learning gaps happen our children whether we agree or not do learning was happening online but still there is much which is need to be done so catch up lessons need to be done immediately children are promoted to a higher level their foundation is weak and along with that there is lot of disturbance in their mental well being also they were disconnected getting them socially back this 
we are you know the tech gen we are connected socially on online with so many people but in real life we have very limited friends so i would like to know from you how we can help this generation which has gone through this period of pandemic see the first thing that they require is a little bit of uh, understanding we keep on blaming them all the time we say you've grown lazy we say that you uh, your handwriting has become bad we say that you have forgotten your spelling we say that you've forgotten this you've forgotten that you didn't pay attention in that class you didn't pay attention in this class and we are indirectly making their jobs slightly more difficult rather than do all that i think teachers should be allowed to interact with the students and actually ascertain those areas in which uh, gaps have been created and there are gaps even in the best of schools no matter how how uh, eloquent they wax over the success of the online thing basically in india we follow uh, you know the system where a guru stands and he teaches what he teaches through his voice is much more effective than what a student can learn on his own from a book mind you we are not in the west and in the east the system is that the guru talks and the student listens but you know uh, we've got to take a mixed view on this because uh, the world is changing and with the changing scenes i think a lot of things have to enter our own educational system but it's a good idea you know to uh, continue with the basics that evolved during the gurukul period that was a lovely time and when a student got to know his guru so closely when he was going out to beg his own food and the food for his uh, guru and his guruma and even society realized that these children ought to be helped because our own children will be at some gurukul and they will be going out to beg their food and therefore even society became very collaborative and they helped these kids out something like that i think should add a new dimension to our educational system and make it uh, slightly more effective you know the kind of parents that we are getting my child is not sitting under the fan please change his seat and what about the other students who are in class why should they be uh, you know not allowed to sit under the fan so it's it's like that everybody wants things for their own children nobody thinks about others and this is something that is lacking in this generation people have actually broken away from their roots you know those who came from villages have forgotten to go back to their villages and rediscover those things that they grew up with i think that uh, brokenness leads to more selfishness and more meanness in society therefore uh, we should try to inculcate some kind of a social consciousness among the students see what i've done in my own school is that i am in partnership with oxfam india and they have picked up 50 or 60 of our students and they train them every week then we've adopted a certain village and in that village we have marked out 15 or 16 huts where our students are doing their studies so they go to these places on sundays they do the need surveys they come back they discuss it in the classes as to what can be done and there is no money involved the school doesn't pay the student doesn't pay uh, the 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 parent is not expected to pay anything we just bring the programs of the banks of the ngos of the government organizations to the people and just help them out while they are filling the forms and all that if we do that at the class 6 7 8 9 level i am sure when these students move out of school they will have some kind of a social consciousness and this is what is going to give a lot of substance to this new generation well there are so many other things but mostly these people are disconnected with reality they don't care actually so this this thing is not right absolutely so very well said
social awareness is not only about understanding what people need or you know understanding that uh, how we can help them it is also about understanding the struggles that people have gone through the joy that they get when they have made an achievement because you know you learn better when you hear from the people those who have experienced something those who have gone through the similar field you learn from the failures it's not only always about success the failures teaches you a lot and when you hear these failure stories they make help you so that you do not commit the similar kind of mistake so very important lesson shared by you sir that social consciousness is very much important we need to make our children socially and aware yeah and there is another thing seema that i would like to point out over here because somebody who is listening to this may actually benefit from it uh, we used to have these uh, catechism and moral science classes in school and uh, they were just reading out from books they were telling us moral stories we were talking about the protagonist of the story whether he was wrong whether he was right wrong or right is ethics good or bad is morality all that was being uh, taught in the classroom now nobody pays attention to all these moral stories so what we did at our school is that we stopped uh, reading from these moral science books and we simply uh, didn't use any book for moral science for one year all that the teachers were told to do was to go and tell them that this time the target of the week is that you've got to help an animal and come back with your feelings we'll talk about it next week and next week they were all talking about things that they had done or not done or had wanted to do so what actually transformed those classes was the experience that the child was coming to class with we were not lecturing him we were not telling him that honesty is the best policy and this and that we were not lecturing but we were helping them to experience that this is something wonderful and if you keep doing it you are going to experience happiness and that is the reason why uh, you got to do these little things you know they add to your happiness happiness doesn't come with money it doesn't come uh, with the fact how big your car is or how how big your bank balance is happiness comes when you know you just put your hand on the head of a student who you feel is feeling rejected for the day because somebody has used harsh words with him you know that's happiness and then he looks up at you and he smiles and he moves on so well, that that's real happiness absolutely sir you know so feelings can't be taught similarly values can't be taught by reading from the book you know a child need to experience it to understand the joy you get when you help others or when you are sympathetic empathetic towards others so you know this is the kind of community we need to build in which is more focused on a common goal of socially staying together building together collaborating together helping each other out voicing for each other this is how we can work together and our country can flourish our planet can flourish we saw the example during the two tough years of pandemic when we were you know very much going ahead to help each other there were so many people who came up in spite of the fear which was rolling out but they were very helpful they tried to build the community they would try to support support each other so this is what we all require and this can be inculcated only in our children and sir has shared a wonderful example which has been practiced in his school i think this is something which all my educator viewers those who are listening to me you can practice similar in your school and see the transformation happening so this was sachidanand sir he shared with us some very valuable lessons to transform the education and make it more meaningful thank you so much sir for your valuable time we hope that your words resonate with the entire fraternity thank you so much once again thank you so much it was my pleasure thank you so much